Hey guys, it's Rahana100 uh, and I'm back with another video and today I'm doing a review for Naruto Shippuden Ultima Ninja Storm Generations which is a fighting game developed by CyberConnect2 which is a game of that adaption of the anime and manga named Naruto uh, which is pretty much one of the most popular animes around it is widely popular around the globe and it's more or less a phenomenon so this is what this is the third game in the storm series the first one the second one and generations uh, all are made by CyberConnect2 and this one is probably in my opinion the weakest one of the titles but still a great game so I will be covering it from both as an as a gamer and as a Naruto fan so I will try to show you some diversity in my uh, opinions but just to start it off uh, first off, we're going over the presentation, and the game looks pretty slick. It looks awesome. The uh, anima animation is pretty much fantastic. Also included in this game are 65 minutes of original anime content, uh, which some of them actually explains what happened um, with for some of the characters, the back their backstory, like Akashi, Minato, and so on. Uh, but other than that, is pretty much a good animation. Uh, tell some of the stories we didn't get in the manga or the anime. So the story is pretty much told through um, kind of the slideshow pictures with some narration by different characters depending on where you are in the story. It covers the story from episode 1 until the Shippuden uh, episodes of the Kafai Kage Summit which is pretty high up in the anime at the moment. So it covers a wide range of the story. Uh, for my part it is Excellent told, uh, the narration is pretty impressive, uh, even in this, even uh, as English voice actors, they are doing a fine job, some of them. Some of the voices, like uh, for the Sushi Kage, I'm actually laughing of that voice because it's just not fitting at all, but my opinion, sorry. Um, for, a, for a game, it is pretty good, good looking, it looks even better, in my opinion, than the, f uh, than the second storm. And they, you can see that they've done some technical improvements. There are not so many glitches uh, anymore. There are still some uh, bugs here and there, and you can still see them. And sometimes they even ruin the game experience, but I will let them pass for now because everything else works so well. When it goes to the story, everything is pretty much as it should be. There is uh, no boss battle this time around, which is pretty, I call it a downfall because what makes uh, the Storm game pretty impressive was this, uh, was this kind of boss battles. I know this is not a full sequel, this is more for the fans like playing more characters, but still I miss the boss battles. Uh, but still the battles there are fine and the story is pretty much told well. There are even some parts that I will say capture uh, the spirit of Naruto more than the anime and manga even sometimes manage to do. But for the most part I still miss some parts of the story. but. They are skipping what they are skipping some places that I really wish they didn't skip, and there are some characters I want to be playable that aren't playable. So yeah, that's how it works. There are big roles to this time around 72 characters and 15 support characters, but even though the roster is large, there are still some characters that are look alike uh, and have similar moves. I don't say this is a bad thing because this is actually how it is in the story, and it follows the adaptation pretty well. So let's just go through the gameplay section. For the gameplay, I would like to say um, the game itself is pretty much run smoothly. If we can look around the bugs here and there, um, the characters looks amazing. They really capture the story. They really capture the moves of every character. And for my part, they've done a fine job in balancing it out. Even though some characters are OP in my opinion, like Daedra spamming and so on. There are some f there are some few characters that I think is a little bit too overpowered. Uh but it doesn't take it doesn't take away the fun. This game is pretty much skill bait. It is easy to pull off. I would say it's a casual fighter because everyone can play this game and still enjoy it even if you didn't watch the story. Uh the fighting is in itself is fun. Every character gets really cool moves. Um I will go and say that the fighting here is much better than was than what it was in Storm One and Storm Two. They have really fine-tuned how to make a good combat experience uh, and playing this with friends is a lot of fun, even taking it online. So you can play online one versus one and it works pretty well, you know. There are some disconnection problems but 
they have been fixed and since launch so the game is just great there are still an active community out there uh, but playing it with friends is just some of the best experience you can have because i can even say that i played it several hours with friends it's still as much of a blast as it was uh, when i first bought it we have become better you become better and better uh, with each character trying to f and you can try out to pull out these long chain combos uh, with support characters which is which is great uh, what I didn't mention is that there is uh, two support characters or one support character that can help you out in the combat and they are pretty much uh, great to have because they bring even more depth to the characters and what they are doing the combat itself is getting even more complex as you keep playing because you're figuring out new moves and new ways to use tricks but it's true that every move is pretty easy to pull off you know you only have one attack button you have one throwing a uh, throwing q knives, throwing projectiles, weapon. But as a matter of fact, the gameplay is fine, it's really fun, especially with friends. And it supports a hu huge amount of stages, 35 stages, all from the anime. They all look amazing for the most part. Uh, and you can really recreate some of this battle that you have been seeing throughout the story, which is just great. The game can also slow down during some of the crazier moments. So finally, is the game worth picking up? Yes it is. In my opinion, if you're actually going to play it with friends, it is def it is a must buy for any Naruto fans. But if you want to go much more into the story, I will recommend buying the first one on the PS3 and the second one on either the PS3 or the Xbox 360 because I feel the second one is telling the story in a much better way with uh, small cutscenes here and there and no slideshow kind of thing. So I kind of feel that you should buy the second one instead of Generations if you are here for the story playing. And of course pick up the third one when it comes out in spring 2013, um, as I know it. Uh, but still, I feel like this game is really worth the money if you're going to play a lot of um, battle mode. And if you're uh, on collecting things, so please check it out. Um, but for the score, it was really hard for me, so I'll go. I will go and give it an 8.5. It is not a real nine because of all the technical bugs here and there, and I kind of feel like the story, even though it's great at some parts, it can be weak in others. Uh, so I kind of feel that there is a trade-off by not using the cinematics and by using the narration and the slideshow. But other than that, it's still a great game, a really great Naruto game, and in my opinion, the best uh, fighting game. Uh, so, please check it out, that was all, I'm probably signing out now, so see you guys next time.